the Aether War is happening right meow. Right meow. <laughs> Bits. <laughs> Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and we're talking the Aether War today. So this particular box set, brand new for January 2020, New Year, who dat? We've got the first starter box out of the gate, and there's actually a surprise in here that I'm going to show you guys, which is really interesting. If you're if you're into Sigmar, you're not just like, all right, let me just check the value on this. They they did something in here that's just kind of cool that we hadn't seen uh, since. General's Handbook? Since General's Handbook? I don't know, it's been at least a year or two, but we'll talk about that here in a minute. So this particular box set is $185, down from $195 for uh, Feast of Bones, which came out recently. And of course that is up from $160, which was the price of every other uh, fan or Age of Sigmar box set in 2019. So a little give and take there, and we'll talk about values here in a second. But remember, you can always get your hobbies from less from Miniature Market or DiceAgames.com. So let's uh, let's talk about the values. Let's break that down before we actually open the box up and show you exactly what's inside. So here's a look at the article on the site. You could just search for Aether Wars over there, and it'll pull this right up. Breaking down the values, uh, like I said, 185, and then here's the contents of the box, which we're gonna show you here in a second. Uh, there's the new Magister model, which is pretty cool. It doesn't come on a flight stand. It's supported by uh, this little uh, wispy Aether, kind of chaos -y, uh, force of, I don't even know, magic. Magic, so it's obviously it's magnets, because <laughs> that's what makes uh, magic work for sure. Here's the breakdown on the prices. So you're gonna get one of the Zangor Enlightened boxes. That's the three duders on disc. Uh, one of the Skyfires, uh, which is also actually, I think it's the same box, just mirrored. Uh, Screamers of Zinch, $35. These have been around for a while. The new Magister of uh, Zinch on disc for $35. Now the Zangor Shaman, which is also generic, is also $35. So it leads me to believe it's probably gonna be uh, $35 each. So that breaks down to $150 MSRP for that side. And then uh, the new Edrin Ringer, Edrin Master on Dirigible suit right here is indeed the first unnamed character uh, hero, I guess, for Sigmar side, uh, for the Caradon Overlords. Now you're gonna get a Gunstock Gun Hauler, two squads, one three-man Sky Wardens, one three-man Edrin Riggers, which literally the same kit, just like we saw above. And the new Edrin Master himself for 35, which I assume it's gonna be 35 because the uh, uh, Brock Gunnison was 40, but he's a special character. So they usually price the generic duders a little bit less. So that's gonna come out to 165 MSRP. For a total uh, MSRP, manufacturer suggested retail price overall for $315. Again, the Feast of, Blade, Feast of Bones box was 315 as well. So interesting, but that was 195. This is 185. Total box set savings, assuming these prices are right when they do hit the streets um, separately, that's going to be $130 in savings. So not too shabby. Spend 180, get 130. You know, give or take. There's some math there. If you can find a friend to split it with, it's definitely a good idea overall. Um, and plus, these two forces also have their battle tome, uh, endless spells on the uh, Zinch side, and uh, their War Scrolls cards as well coming out this week. So kind of like a whole like slew of releases to celebrate them finally getting their 2.0 books but also some models and some other things to pick up too. So it's, you know, it's exciting for these players for sure. Bring on the mini. So here's the box set. We already showed you this, $185 uh, fresh this week right here. There's the contents a little bit uh, cooler looking. I like this little backdrops they did with the um, smoke and uh, or the fog machine and stuff coming up out of there. I don't know where this table is, but it looks pretty dope. Hopefully it's in the battle tone books and you can kind of get a better idea of like how cool it, it is because it's a it's pretty neat little looking uh, table right there and everything you would imagine kind of from the Zeech side of things. So here's the breakdown on the box, which we already talked about and made in the UK as we would expect. Flipping it back over, we're gonna open this bad boy up and it's gonna reveal all the juicy plastic sprues on the inside. Now the only thing technically new in here are gonna be these two right here, which is gonna be the Magister and the Edrin Master on the Ridgeable. So these guys we're gonna take a closer look at. The rest of the stuff in here we've actually already showed you and unboxed uh, at some point in the past, going all the way back to 2013, believe it or not. So there's definitely a lot to be had if you want to check our YouTube channel for uh, previous unboxings and stuff. I'm going to slide these out of the way, although I guess I can show you the individual kit. So here is the Screamer kit. 
uh, which is pretty standard. There's actually another piece in here somewhere too because it actually comes with uh, three of those. Here's the gun hauler kit and some of the flying stands right there. It just made its way into it. So there's that. You're going to get one of those. I think that was a $50 retail one. Uh, there's the Zinch Duders on disc. And like I said, those actually are duplicated. So you're going to get two of those. So exact same sprue. It's going to come with all the stands and everything you need and all the different bases, which is another thing I'm going to show you here in a second with the instruction manual. And then, of course, you're going to get the Sky Wardens and the Engineer Dudes as well. Literally the same sprue, but six dudes total, three in each kit. So they kind of duplicated some of it, which isn't that big of a deal. I mean, it's not, it's not like we haven't seen that in the past, so it doesn't take anything away. If anything, it definitely adds value. Once you slide their little poster kind of insert, and I like how GW did this. You know, I, I made fun of them there for a while when they weren't doing this because it would actually, the sprues would dig into the books and the booklets and the material in here and it would kind of mess everything up. So it's cool that they put this in here to actually take some of the puncture wounds. And uh, we actually did a tutorial, well, semi-tutorial, it's not like super rocket science or anything like that. But uh, one, <laughs> the, you can buy a, a 11 by 17 inch frames. Um, spray, it doesn't exactly fit. These inserts don't exactly fit in 11 by 17 frames, but you spray the back of uh, the insert that comes in the frame with a little spray paint, black spray paint, use the same color all the way around and boom, you've got an instant frame for these things. So that's why we actually put the 11 by 17 frames in our Amazon affiliate links below. So you can check that out if you got a hot uh, poster that you'd like to frame up and put in your beat slab, well then boom, that's uh, super easy to do. And of course, you can look for the exact how to, but I just broke it down to you that LT did as a guest post for us. So getting into the nuts and bolts, or the meats and potatoes, so to speak, mm, both gluten free. You can see the bases, it's, everything's gonna come with in those uh, derpy little flying stands. I don't personally like them, but I did use them and I, and I magnetized them for my suppressors for uh, my Primaris Marine. So I can actually, uh, we'll be putting out a tutorial on how to magnetize these stands to not be derpy. War scroll cards and some scenario cards. It looks like these are hidden agendas. Yep, hidden agendas for the little campaign, the mini six campaign that comes in this Aether War book. And this Aether War book's actually pretty cool. Believe it or not, it's got a lot of cool material in here, a lot of background fluff. I'm sure some of it's duplicated in the battle tomes, but it's definitely worth a read, um, just even if it's cursory. And then you get in here to the section where it's gonna give you those uh, little fluff battles, the battle plans and such for the uh, kind of the narrative type things. But the thing that I wanna point out is that it does have two War Scroll battalions in here. There you can see them right there. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on them. The individual War Scroll listings course for all the stuff but look at this pitch battle profiles this is the first this is that surprise surprise this is the first time they put uh point values for these in the starter boxes remember they used to do this with those little um little slips there were little slips of paper and they would be a little war scroll battalion for the start collecting boxes and then they got away from that when everything went to points cost but now, boom, it's back. So that's kind of interesting to see. We didn't see this with Loon Curse, or we didn't see this with, uh, actually, we didn't see this with Feast of Bones either. So this is kind of like a new thing for them to put that in with these pamphlets, which I think is pretty neat. You're also gonna get the little uh, mini rule, well, not mini, it's kind of like the condensed version of the rule book, and all the tokens and rulers and things that you need for those scenarios. And then we're gonna talk more about the instructions. So credit where credit's due, GW has really been upping their game when it comes to assembly instructions and they're, most of the materials that come in uh, any sort of bundle box or anything like that. We've seen recently where they went ahead and listed out the individual base sizes uh, for the components and for the kits that actually come in here, which is very nice. It shows you the sprues, it shows you the base sizes and everything that you're gonna get in here. It's a complete breakdown of the contents so you can match everything up, which Actually, it seems like a good idea. It seems like a no-brainer, but they actually weren't doing it. And it, it could cause a little confusion for new hobbyists. So I think having that in this starter set, the starter bundle, is a great idea for uh, Games Workshop's part. And then here's the instructions for uh, the new guy, the engine master. And you, what, I, what I found funny, and we're gonna show you the sprues here in a second, is that that little stand, that little derpy stand, actually goes up in his little thruster. So... <laughs> <laughs> Make what insert whatever joke you want here, but that's uh, that's kind of how it does. It, for the most part, it goes together like the other guys did with the little uh, ski jet pad 
foot pad plates right there and then the backpack goes on separate and then the, the dirigible balloon and this thing actually has a vector on it or a little bit of a motor sort of thing right there so it kind of plop plop propels them around like a EVA, EVA suit so to speak and then sky riggers and all, all the other stuff that's going to be in here that we've already showed you in the past and let's skip ahead to the magister you find that dude and there's the magister on disc and like i said he is actually held up through magic this little wispy magical sprue of uh or bit of zinchi goodness kind of like janzar for the eldar line is held up by her hair which is kind of cool to see too so they're really knocking out of the park with this dynamic uh, kind of posing and things when it comes to a lot of the new releases, especially when the majority of them are special characters to kind of uh, vanguard out of a starter box offering and an endless spell offering, and a, you, you know, you kind of see how it's going here, right? No big deal. I like this guy, he's got little bird feet. Cacao, cacao. And the one thing I'm worried about is this uh, this cape right here that it's uh, split in half down the back. So you're definitely gonna probably want to use some of that uh, Vallejo plastic putty to seal that up or some super thin glue to get a nice seal in there to where you can kind of scrape it down. So just be careful of that. Now we're gonna put this guy together too and to give you all the gotchas and everything. But it looks like for the most part, he's designed to kind of lock in there and he has a very, very dynamic pose. So let's take a look at the new sprues themselves here he is uh, the little the short little fatty that's what we'll call him right here so it's just a one sprue kind of deal but if you remember in the past we've seen that these kits will come you know left and right halves like for instance Mephiston was two sprues but when you put them together it was about this big so this is designed at least I would imagine to be in some sort of box it's about this big when it is released very similar uh, to their existing HQ character right there so that's the lowdown on this, of course, is copyright 2020, so we already knew that that was going to be the thing right there. And, you know, for the most part, it's got all the options on here. You can't really do a lot of, like, uh, converting or anything. Um, I mean, you could substitute out some parts maybe here and there, but for the most part, it is going to be the way it is. But we'll know more in a second when, once we put it together. And then here's the Magister right here. Oh, and by the way, this goes on a 40 mil base. And this Magister right here will go on a 50 mil base, so a little bit bigger. You can see the big swoosh right here of ethereal energy. This definitely reminds me of the, uh, what is it, the Yankarne? I think that's what it is for uh, for the Eldar in 40k, for the uh, Yanari Eldar. I don't know, all the words in 40k. And then here you can see the rest of the parts. Again, it's the two sprue format, but combined together to form one sprue Voltron right there and boom there's the back so it's got some very you know it's pretty well detailed i like these little bird legs right here with the little caca claws and uh this crazy looking staff right here and then the dude's got like a lot going on in his face he definitely has a stupid face but from one stupid face to another i like it. so first up is the completed edrin master right here and he looks pretty cool he's got a really neat posing now the stem does go up his uh, thruster so to speak the one in his rear just applying a little gentle back pressure. So this actually locks in like like so, propping them upright, but you're gonna have to glue the base. So this is gonna be a perfect opportunity for a magnet, probably one eighth inch, like I use with my suppressors. Um, and like I said, we'll do a we'll do a complete tutorial on all of that right there, but just a two one eighth inch magnet should, should uh, get it done right there. Posey wise, it looks pretty cool. You know, he's just kind of doing his thing, got his sword out, got his gun, got his little, Help our arms, doing a helper arm thing. Detail is pretty cool. Nice depth to the miniature, you know. And it's got this uh, this little um, I don't know what do you call this engine. I guess this is basically an, like, like an engine. The rudders or the propellers. We'll go with propellers. I'm searching for the word. We finally got it. Uh, he is on a 40 mil base, and this is how he compares to the size of something familiar. Maybe like a uh, little revenant dude out of. Sylvanus, the tree people. So while he does look kind of big, he is kind of small. He's definitely dwarfy size. Next up is the Green Goblin. I mean, the Magister. <laughs> I didn't realize he had this little cool little hood just kind of like flopping down like he uh, like he's going really fast and his uh, kind of hood fl flopped off like there. So you could definitely make this into like a Green Goblin or a Hobgoblin type miniature um, with just a little bit of rudimentary work. Now, Detail wise, you know, like I said, it's it's pretty cool. It's got all sorts of stuff going on with 
uh, the little disc right there, and then he's got his little bird legs. But the slices are pretty obvious on this. Now, like I said, you're going to want to use some plastic putty or some super thin uh, Tamiya glue, and we've got the links to that underneath there in the description and the comments field. Here is the Vallejo plastic putty, which I actually recommend more, but a lot of, a lot of cases I like to assemble this stuff with this right here. Um, if I if I have the option to and bigger things I use the army painter glue for because it's uh, magical and quite possibly crack I'm not sure which one but it works and there you can see the seam line on his uh, Robe right there on the back that we were talking about earlier, too So they are pretty noticeable so you're definitely gonna want to gap fill those But everything else comes together pretty well and he's got you know again really cool posing You know it's doing this whole like swoosh kind of thing and with a little bit of work and a little bit of masking You could kind of tape off a lot of these areas and just kind of have some fun with the, you know, the, the glow effects and things. Maybe paint that last so it kind of goes over, uh, you know, this area right here if you're going to use an airbrush. And then, of course, you could just take a handy dandy kind of post it and just mask off the actual model itself so you didn't get any glow on the model but you get a little bit of glow on the base type deal so i think it's pretty neat now this is on a bigger 50 mil base so here's how he compares to uh one of the little sky uh, tree peoples right there so definitely kind of towering over him and he is a little bit bigger than um the normal disc guys because i believe they are on 40 mils too so you definitely get to notice that this guy is a character of some sort so looking looking pretty fresh so overall that's uh these are the two new miniatures of course there is some battle tome books and uh endless spells war scroll cards and i think dice just for the zinc side of things this week too so make sure to check out all of those new releases you can always get them for less from miniature market or diceheadgames.com so that's it for this one thank you very much for watching make sure you hit that notifications button and hit subscriptions so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos.